Reporter Barton Gelman reports tonight, uh, excuse me, today at The Atlantic, that the Trump re-election campaign and Republican legislatures are working right now on a plan to nullify the ballots, to nullify the results of November's election and just install Trump directly for another term through the Electoral College. And again, I know it's like, this, this sounds like the this is, sounds like brainstorming, right? It sounds like the worst case scenario stuff that everybody tried to stretch their brains to come up with as a like democracy in peril mind game when Trump started talking in these small d anti-democratic ways in 2016. But now it's here, right? And it's like solid reporting about what they're doing. And it's our own eyes and ears in terms of what the president is standing in the White House saying. It's no longer theoretical. We don't have to wonder about it anymore. Now we're living it. We just have to figure out what we're going to do about it. I mean, here, here's Bart Gelman reporting today in The Atlantic. Quote, the worst case is not that Trump rejects the election outcome. The worst case is that he uses his power to prevent a decisive outcome against him. If Trump sheds all restraint and if his Republican allies play the parts he assigns them, he could obstruct the emergence of a legally unambiguous victory for Biden. He could prevent the formation of consensus about whether there's any outcome from the election at all. He could seize on that uncertainty to hold on to power. Trump's state and national legal teams are already laying the groundwork for post-election maneuvers that would circumvent the results of the vote count in battleground states. And then Bart Gelman gets very specific as to how they are doing it. Listen to this. December 8th is known as the safe harbor deadline for appointing the 538 men and women who make up the Electoral College. Each state must appoint them by the safe harbor date, December 8th, to guarantee that Congress will accept their credentials as electors. Quote, we're accustomed to choosing electors by popular vote, but nothing in the Constitution says it has to be that way. Article 2 provides that each state shall appoint electors in such manner as the legislature thereof may direct. Since the late 19th century, every state has ceded the decision about who its electors are to its voters. Even so, the Supreme Court affirmed in Bush v. Gore that a state can take back the power to appoint electors. How and when a state might do so has not been tested for well over a century. Quote, Trump may test this. According to sources in the Republican Party at the state and national levels, the Trump campaign is discussing contingency plans to bypass election results and instead appoint loyal electors in battleground states where Republicans control the state legislature. With a justification based on claims of rampant fraud, Trump would ask state legislators to set aside the popular vote in their state and exercise their power instead to choose a slate of electors directly. The longer Trump succeeds in keeping the vote count vote count in doubt, the more pressure state legislators will feel to act before the safe harbor deadline expires. To a modern Democratic sensibility, discarding the popular vote for partisan gains look, looks uncomfortably like a coup, whatever license may be found for it in law. Would Republicans find that position disturbing enough to resist? Would they cede the election before resorting to such a ploy? Trump's base would exact a high price for that betrayal. And by this point, party officials would be invested in a narrative of fraud in the election. The Trump campaign legal advisor I spoke with told me the push to appoint electors would be framed in terms of protecting the people's will. Once committed to the position that any continued counting of ballots that extends beyond election day is somehow a rigged process, this advisor said, state lawmakers will want to judge for themselves what the voters of their states intended. The state legislatures will say, all right, we've been given this constitutional power. We don't think the results of our own state are accurate. So here's our slate of electors that we think properly reflect the results of our state, the Trump advisor said. Quote, in Pennsylvania, three Republican leaders told me they'd already discussed the direct appointment of electors among themselves. And one, the Republican state party chairman for Pennsylvania, said that he had discussed it already with Trump's reelection campaign. Martin Gellman reporting at The Atlantic tonight based on sources at the Trump campaign. Sources advising the Trump campaign on this strategy and sources in Republican legislators who say, yeah, they're talking to the Trump campaign about doing this. The get rid of the ballots plan is a real plan 
to have Republican-controlled legislatures in all sorts of swing states, like let's say Pennsylvania, let's say Wisconsin, right? Let's say Ohio. Have Republican-controlled legislatures nullify any election results in their states. Uh, this is taking too long. We heard there's terrible fraud here. There's been allegations of terrible fraud here. Mail-in ballots are a fraud. We didn't get them counted on election night. We don't think anything counted after election night counts. They will nullify election results in their states. Say the, the, the whatever ballots are being counted here, this is all a fraud. This is all a hoax. We know who won this state. We'll appoint electors to the Electoral College who will tell you that Trump won this state because the state legislatures have that power. And that, of course, would only happen amid a blizzard of court challenges, which would very quickly go to the Supreme Court, which is why the president insists he puts somebody on the Supreme Court right now, before the election, to make sure this plan works, to keep him installed for a second term, regardless of who votes how on election day or before. It's here. We are here. It's happening. We don't have to wonder anymore as individuals, right? We don't have to wonder, well, as, as, I mean, as citizens, we don't have to wonder what it would be like to live through a time like this. As individual citizens, we don't have to wonder anymore how we would react, how we would act, what we would do for our country if our country was ever in this kind of peril. You now know what you would do for your country if your country was ever in this much danger. It's whatever it is you're doing right now. What you're doing now, what you're planning to do for the next six weeks, that's what you're made of. That's what you'll be able to say you did when your country needed you.